Hey there, and welcome to Descript Season 4 Update. I am Andrew, Descript CEO. If you haven't seen one of these before, the idea is that they're kind of quarterly events where we share what we've been up to over here and usually announce some cool new features. It's been a while since our last event. It was last July, but we're going to get back in the habit of these things. So back in October, we released our biggest single update ever, a completely redesigned version of Descript that reimagined the way multi-track video editing works with a concept called Scenes and a ton of great new features like green screen, stock libraries, and more. The response from customers has been just awesome. Like, George here says that the changes won him over. And then he basically says that normally companies overhaul their UX and it's a dumb idea, but with Descript it wasn't. Jake is a podcaster who's taken his podcasting into a new video dimension thanks to the new Descript. And it's been awesome to see people who are using Descript for whom video editing was previously out of reach. Back over here at Descript HQ, for a change, our focus hasn't been on adding new features. Instead, we've just been listening to your feedback and making sure that everything Descript already has works super well. Making Descript more stable, improving workflows, and just generally making sure that we have a product that fulfills the promise of what a script and scene editor could be. So I've got a few new features to share with you today, but I want to start with an update on the thing that's been our main focus, quality. First of all, Descript is a lot more stable. For the last six months, we've been spending a majority of our engineering time on bugs, stability, and polish. And we're now at a point where Descript is the most stable that it's ever been, considerably more so than Descript Classic. And we're not done. This remains our focus. So in the coming months, the new Descript is just going to get smoother and smoother. Second, we've listened to your product feedback. There's a bunch of things we changed in the redesign where you told us we'd maybe gotten a little too clever, gone too far, so we fixed those things. For example, while overall the simplified UI is great for most situations, there are times where you really just want to keep your list of compositions or your project files open, so we made it possible to dock these drawers on the side of your screen. We've also made the sidebar easier to work with, editing clip speed, multi -clip. editing clip speed, multi-clip property editing, all that stuff is now much easier to work with. We also brought back the VU meter, multi-microphone audio recording, and you can search for highlights. So lots of little things like this that might have impacted your workflow. We're now at a point where over 80% of our existing customers have transitioned to the new Descript. So if you haven't made the switch yet, go for it. Even if you're just using Descript for audio podcasting and don't care about the video features, it's a much more refined and stable product experience at this point. And it's the only version getting new features like the ones that I'm going to talk about in a second. But before I get there, I want to talk about new platforms or a new platform, the web. That's right. We finally made it possible to use Descript in your web browser. That also means that Chromebook and Linus users get to use Descript now too. We're really excited about this, and it's something that we've been working toward for a long time. Even if you're perfectly happy with the app version of Descript, it's going to make collaboration so much easier because your collaborators no longer need an app to play, comment, or edit a Descript project. This also ties into our quality goals. Believe it or not, the performance characteristics of our new state-of-the-art web technology are better than the desktop version. OK, cool. Now let's talk about a few new features, starting with something in generative audio. So many years ago, when we first found out that generative audio was going to be a thing, we thought to ourselves, what are we going to do with this magical new technology? Everyone was like, make it so I can generate synthetic audiobooks of myself reading books to my children and stuff like that. And we were like, that's cool. But also, there are probably some more practical, boring things that we could do and would be really helpful. So we shipped Overdub, which makes it easy to change words in your recording by just typing the new words. And there was another idea along those lines that we're finally getting around to shipping today. We're calling it Regenerate. So say you recorded something, and now you're editing it. Most of the edits are going to sound good, like this. Everyone was in such a good mood because of how nice it was outside. I had a blast. Everyone was in such a good mood. I had a blast. But sometimes they're going to sound like this. Oh my god, what do you call those things? Um... Oh, an ice pop. I actually decided that I would treat myself and buy an ice pop. And an edit like that, there's no audio engineering degree in the world that can fix that. It's just a total intonation mismatch. So sorry, you can't make that edit. Got to find another path or just re-record. That's where Regenerate comes in. I just click the gap between the words and click Regenerate, and new audio cells are grown that make it sound absolutely seamless. 
I actually decided that I would treat myself and buy an ice pop. I hadn't had one of those since I was in like grade school. You can also use Regenerate to improve a weird performance. Like here, this speaker seems to lose interest in himself midway through. The towns get smaller, the prairie wilder, and you drive for a long time without seeing any cars. Just select the range, Regenerate, and it sounds like this. The towns get smaller, the prairie wilder, and you drive for a long time without seeing any cars. Okay, one last demo. You can also use Regenerate to remove unexpected background noise. Like a human face that people can be attracted to because, you know, we're human. Like a human face that people can be attracted to because, you know, we're humans and we really love to see other humans. So that's Regenerate. Last but not least, we've got something really special for those of you who like to record from scripts. It's going to make your life a hundred times easier. Did you know, one of the really cool things about Descript is that you can actually write directly into the editor. Now, why would you want to write your script here instead of a word processor? Well, if you've ever written a script before, you know that as you're going, you're getting ideas for visuals. And if you're just working in a normal doc, you have to kind of compartmentalize. You know, maybe you make a note in parentheses or you create a storyboard somewhere else. But if you write your script in Descript, you can actually drop in visuals as you go. Temp visuals just to get an idea down or the final visuals if you know what they are. And Descript uses AI voices to generate audio as you type. So just by writing your script, you're actually creating a video. So this is all pretty cool, but until now, it still had one big problem. What if you don't want to use an AI voice? What if you maybe just want to have it as a placeholder, but then you want to replace it with real audio or a camera recording at the end? You could just make a recording and add it in there, but you're going to speak at a different rate than your AI voice, so it'll change the timing of all your scenes. You could maybe find a way to do it, but it's janky enough that you never actually would work this way. So for that, we're introducing Record and Replace. Now you can record over an existing script, and Descript will match the new transcript to the old one and use that to intelligently expand and contract the length of the scenes to match the pacing of your new recording. You just select the part of the script that you want to replace and hit record, and now you can just record audio or also record your camera, and when it's done, Descript just swaps out whatever was there before, an AI voice or even if it was just an old version of the recording with whatever is new. Even if you make mistakes in your new recording, Descript is pretty good about keeping your scenes in the right place, and then you can just edit out the mistakes like before. This may seem like a small thing, but we think it's pretty big. It could totally change the way you make stuff. Like normally, if you want to see how something works as an actual video, you need to record it. And then inevitably, you want to make edits, you incorporate feedback, and then you have to go back and re-record it. It's a pain, because recording is a whole process. Now, if you want, you can make recording the absolute last thing that you do. You get a fully working video, get all of your edits and tweaks done, and only record once you know that you've got everything dialed in. There's not really any tool in the world that enables a workflow like this. By the way, there's one other cool way that you can use record and replace. Say that you don't want the whole automatic replacement thing. You can just manually step through scenes one by one by pressing enter during your recording. This is great if you want to record something that's like totally different from the original, or if you just want to record into a blank script. Like maybe you've laid out a presentation and now you just want to wing it unscripted. Okay, so you're probably thinking that's all great, but it still doesn't solve the hardest part about a scripted recording. Recording from a script is great because it makes you sound like way more coherent, but the problem is eye contact. If you want to look at the screen, you've either got to memorize your script or get a teleprompter, which is not only a pain, but if you've ever tried it, it's like a whole skill. It's not that easy to do. So surprise, AI to the rescue with this new eye contact effect that like basically rotates your eyeballs in their sockets so they're looking at the screen all the time. It sounds creepy, and it is, but you'll be seriously surprised by how well it actually works. So now you can just record yourself reading off of your screen, and it looks like you're staring at the camera. But if you turn off the effect, then it, you can see that I'm not actually looking at the camera. And if you turn it back on, it looks like I am. Off, on, off, on, off. Pretty cool. That's all for season four. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here at the next event in a few months.